Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some good stuff, but at first glance, it's, it just makes me think to myself, yeah, right, because I'm so sick of hearing about Bitcoin to a million, but that's not what this is about. This is about what smart money is doing. So Fidelity Digital Assets validates a model that predicts Bitcoin price at one million. Whether you believe that or not is irrelevant because the next story talks about how the Fidelity president files for a new Bitcoin fund. So I am always interested to see not what people are saying, but what they are doing. And this, to me, is big news. Also, we're going to go over a Q and C of the day, and I'll explain that when we get to that uh, section. But the question of the day just talks about cryptocurrencies and digital assets and the difference between. And also, we're going to take a look at the Ethereum Mafia and where I got it wrong. But before we do that, let's take a look at what's going on in the market today, August 27th, and it is about 1 o'clock Texas time, p.m. It looks like Bitcoin's taking a little bit of a tumble. Bitcoin down to 1125, 1.7%. Man, seven days down 4%. Uh, hopefully we can see some better days, but uh, look, we're early. It's gonna go up, it's gonna go down. What are you gonna do? Down the cost average, just forget about it. Ethereum, 380, that looks pretty good. Even though it's down almost 2%, uh, it's still teetering on that 400 mark, and that's what I wanna see. And then the uh, two stable coins, Tether and XRP here, I know XRP isn't a stable coin, but boy, it sure acts like it. Uh, looks like Tether's Tether and XRP is what? 26 cents. Watch out. Chain link 1449. Again, we had a massive run. Here's the retracement. Hopefully, it can get up there and uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, the darling, Polkadot is it's been flipping and flopping between the fifth and sixth position because it is so close to chain link even though uh, we're looking at the market cap of 5.1 versus 5.5 and i gotta tell you as time goes on i think polka dot's gonna do pretty good we did a video yesterday on that and i talked about how uh that one uh, in the beginning i wasn't too excited about it but now I'm really looking into it i've i've got my my hooks in and i kind of see what it could potentially become but uh only time will tell but i gotta tell you it's got a fantastic team it's got a really good direction it's got a lot of experience so these are the things that i like to see as a positive and i talked yesterday i said look i know it's fantastic and i knew it's great but take it I, this is not my first rodeo. I'll just say that. So when I see the shiny new object, I don't get that impressed anymore. And I told I told everybody, you know, don't FOMO in. Don't dump a bunch. Even my friends, I was telling my, I was telling my friend George, I'm like, listen, man. I go, polka dot's gonna be pretty good. You should invest into it. He's like, well, how much should I put in? Like ten thousand? I'm like, whoa, whoa, what the hell? No, no, no. That's not what I want you to do. I go, just dollar cost average in, just a little bit every day, three days, week, two weeks, whatever you want to do. But don't dump everything in because our goal is just to stay. Uh, ahead of the uh, price action so if, if we dump everything in and the next day let's say yesterday it was six and right now it's 566 You're like damn that sucks just lost whatever you know 11 percent 10 percent or or five percent uh, i don't want you to do that so just dollar cost average in safer way to do things you might miss some you know some some gains here and there uh but it's just a safer way to do things and in the end i mean if you only make five million can you live with yourself if you only make five million maybe you could have made seven and a half million uh, at some point, it's not going to matter. So uh, today was my day where uh, Voyager took out my whopping $25 as a dollar cost average in a polka dot. See, I told you, I'm pretty boring. Anyhow, Bitcoin Cash, down 5%. Eh, what are you going to do? Litecoin, Bitcoin SV, yeah. Crypto.com, down, 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 down. Everything is down. Ooh, VeChain, down 7%. What else we got? 8%. Wow, a lot of red. Look at that. 13% theta network. Oh, my theta. What are you going to do? 9%. 11. Cued them down 11%. 6.5. I got to tell you, usually when I go this deep, uh, there is some green somewhere, and it's very rare to see that. So look, if you're in the red, everybody's in the red. Don't worry about it. Just uh, It's like the weather in Texas. If you don't like it, just stick around for a bit. It'll change. And uh, that's it. So let's jump into today's big stories. First up, Fidelity Digital Assets validates model, and this is from Plan B. That predicts Bitcoin price at 1 million. I got to tell you, I'm so sick of hearing that Bitcoin's going to a million. Bitcoin's going to a million. I remember John McAfee said that. God, what a disappointment that guy is. Um, not for what he's done. Just for, I mean, for like, you know, uh, McAfee virus software. Great stuff. He used to use that as a kid. Fantastic. But uh, just, you know, suckering people in by saying it's a million and then calling everybody stupid for believing him. So, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Anyhow, um, this isn't about... The prediction of it's going to a million because i don't think it's going to i'll just be honest with you i think 250 is the tops and that's going to be a long time that's just me i'm a very reserved person however what i'd like to see 
is not what people are saying, but what they were doing. And these two articles go back to back in tandem. That's why I want to bring it. So Fidelity Digital Assets uh, reviewed and validated the stock to flow model, predicts the model, the price of a million, and expects Bitcoin to outperform gold after 2024 because of the stock to flow ratio. And this was interesting about they are predicting that all of the gold is going to be mined by 2035. I had no idea that was a thing. So that's interesting. Also, if you subscribe to the whole thing about what Elon Musk said, where they're going to blast off rockets and mine gold out of asteroids, <laughs> how much could the you know gold really be then? There's a lot of them out there, but what are you going to do? All right, so I'm not going to read the whole article because some of it's kind of boring. But uh, here's the big thing. The stock to flow ratio and, they, and they're just looking at you know 2025 is when they believe that it is going to hit one million dollars look for me i can wait four years i'm good i got nothing else going on i mean i got other businesses but i mean uh, i i have the, the money just sitting there waiting to accumulate that's why i say cryptocurrency as fast as it is it is not a get rich quick scene just dollar cost average in and sit back and wait just kick it what else you got to do but the thing is that it's not just Fidelity. Uh, the asset management firm Grayscale agrees with Fidelity uh, or, the, or their conclusions as shown on the chart below. Uh, so Grayscale and Fidelity pretty much say the same thing. Look, stock to flow ratio, we're pretty much following the, the, the model to a T. We'd like to see it go up and they're gonna see, looks like uh, 2021 is a year. I mean, I can see that definitely happening to 100,000. 2022, 2023. I don't agree with it's going to stay flat like this, though. I, I think it's going to go down a little bit, just like it always has, just like it did right here and over here and over here and over here. So I don't think it's going to be flat. Uh, I think it'll go to, I think it could go 100, 100K. And then if we hit to 2025, sure, like I said, I could definitely wait. But but the interesting stuff is really in the report. I'm going to link that in the description. But uh, this is a, it's a 19 page report. It's fascinating, really. And it just talks about, it's the same thing we've been talking about on this channel for forever. And it's just good to see that smart money, especially Fidelity, which I don't know if you realize this, but Fidelity has almost 8 trillion assets under management. That's trillion with a T. Now, when I was a kid, I thought a billion was a lot of money, but that's just, you know, paper money these days. Anyhow, this is a nice little quote from uh, Brian Kelly, BKCM. He says, Bitcoin is the most significant innovation in finance since the Medici's invented double entry accounting. There is a great um, documentary on Bitcoin. It was just released, I think it was in May or April 2020. And it gives an account of the Medici's back in the day, how they did the double entry accounting, how it just revolutionized everything. And if they're saying this is bigger than that, hey, I got to agree. But uh, here's the point. Scarcity is the care characteristic cited in reference to a good store of value as it is essential for protecting against the depreciation of real value in the long run. One of Bitcoin's most novel innovations is its unfor unforgeable digital scarcity. There's a caveat there. It's not just about scarcity, it's also about demand. Um, if you have a scarcity of a flip-flop, like, like you're like, hey, I made these purple flip-flops and no one else has them, that's just, you're just scarce in a flip, but there's no demand, who cares? Here is a difference. There is huge demand for Bitcoin, and we see it all over the place. These big corporations, these big entities uh, are getting into the game. And even if you uh, took a look at that uh, interview I did with Alex Maschioli, where you know he is the, the head of uh, Bquant, and he's talking about big, huge players, and all they ask about is Bitcoin. Now, is Bitcoin the only thing that's going to go up? No. Everything else will go up with Bitcoin. That's why I'm always talking about it, because if Bitcoin goes up, you know what else goes up? Tomato coin. I'm just kidding. But you know what I mean? Like everything in, in, in the whole space goes up. So that's what I'm trying to say. It says Bitcoin scarcity was coded in the protocol when it was created. The unknown consequences of record low interest rates, unprecedented levels of uh, global monetary and fiscal stimulus, also known as quantitative easing, also known as quack economics, also known as money printing, and deglobalization are all adding fuel to the fire of awareness and adoption. And I got to tell you, it is interesting how the uh, happening happened in May when all this craziness was happening. Uh, so that was a big catalyst, I think, for Bitcoin's price going up. The worse the economy does or the worse that everything uh, happens in the world, unfortunately, the more gold and Bitcoin will go up. Just an opinion. And lastly, it says longer term drivers include slow and steady inflation and the great wealth transfer to a millennial demographic that has a, favor a very favorable opinion on digital assets. So I thought that was pretty interesting. All right, scrolling down, this, I always talk about this, about the uh, how early we are and how much money is in the space. So if you're looking at Bitcoin, 
a whopping $172 billion, which is a lot of money, let's be honest. Uh, not for Jeff Bezos. Uh, he actually is a 200 billionaire, so good for that guy. But uh, Facebook, you know, $684 billion, so Bitcoin share is only 25% of that. Gold, $11 trillion. $11 trillion in gold. That means that, that Bitcoin is only 1.6% of that. And if you don't think that Bitcoin is coming for gold's lunch, you are out of your mind. And that is why Schiff, Peter Schiff, is always talking about it. One, I do believe he thinks, I believe that he thinks that Bitcoin sucks. I believe he thinks that Bitcoin is worthless. Uh, but that is all formulated inside his mind because he is such a big gold bug. I get it. And uh, that's it. But I think only time will tell. I happen to believe that he is incorrect. But what do I know? Stock markets, 89 trillion. That's 0.2% of Bitcoin. Global debt, global real estate. And then if you look at the derivatives market, it's like 0.001%. So we got a lot of room to grow. Uh, so you watching this right now, um, I think you're a millionaire already. All right, let's move down. This one by John Pfeiffer of uh, or Pfeffer, Pfeffer Capital. He says, most people in the world don't yet see Bitcoin as digital gold. As soon as people see it in a different way, the price will adjust. And uh, if you know, if you've been on the channel for a while, I always talk about this elevator pitch. And I say, you know, uh, Bitcoin is digital gold. Uh, there's only 21 million, unlike gold, which is, you know, you could mine it for whoever long. And uh, you can send it to anyone, anyone in the world for next to nothing. It used to be cost a nickel. Uh, now it costs almost $12,000, why I heavily invest into it. So that's my little elevator pitch. But there is one, one thing. I was playing volleyball this weekend, and somebody asked me, said, hey, I have a question, which is, what is Bitcoin? Why Bitcoin? I don't get it. And I started off with this question. What gives... And, I, and I, I took a $20 bill out of my pocket. I said, what gives this value? And she's like, I don't know. I go, what gives it value is it's backed by the U.S. government. That's it. That's it. And it's not even worth that much because, you know, dollar goes down. I said, so what gives gold value? She's like, I don't know. I said, well, we give it value. I mean, we said thousands of years ago, gold is worth this, X amount of this, and that whatever else. Just like seashells worth something, just like salt was worth something, just like buckskin's worth something, and just like this dollar is worth something. It's because we gave it that value, and then, of course, the government uh, backed it up. And then I went into everything. So I, I think it's good to kind of frame it that way. If you ever want to talk to people about it, just say, what gives a dollar value? Well, it's the government. What gives gold value? Well, it's this and that. And if they ever say, well, you know, gold has intrinsic value, I can make a watch out of it. Like, really? That is true. But when people are buying gold, they're not buying gold so they can turn it into a, a ring or a watch or whatever else. They're buying gold as a speculative asset and as a store of value, which is the same thing as Bitcoin. That's what I always say. And then if I if I really want to go deep, I'll say, well, what's the intrinsic value of Google? You can't touch it. You can't see it. Google's Google. But it sure is valuable. Anyhow, moving far, moving down, down, down. Um, and this was the, uh, the stock to flow ratio. And this little piece here, I'm going to zoom in. A Goldman Sachs report from 2015 estimated that the last of gold from known reserves of mine by 2035, excuse me, 2035, and the last of platinum will be mined by 2055. The last Bitcoin will be mined around 2040. So I got to tell you, that's, I think, where they're kind of coming from as far as that stock to flow ratio and their million dollar prediction. So, okay, million dollars. I mean, I'm not going to be upset if it makes, makes that. I mean, if it hits it, great. If it doesn't, I'll take 250. And then lastly, I just want to talk about this because this is kind of important. If So when people are talking about the U.S. dollar, and how you know great it is here's the purchasing power of the us dollar and you can google this and it's all the same thing so that's why like back in the day you know a nickel will buy a loaf of bread right i mean your grandfather said the same thing right however as time has gone on and now we're this isn't just in 2018 2020 what do you think the purchasing power of the dollar is right now how many of you have gone into a restaurant and uh seen the prices go up how many of you gone to your grocery store to the prices go up how many have gone anywhere the prices go up well there is a there is a reason for that i think it's the weakening of the u.s dollar but uh just uh just a thought so that's pretty much it i'm not going to beat a dead horse but uh again i'm not real big on the, the million dollar theory as far as bitcoin but what i am big on is when we start to talk about these high entities this smart money and what they are doing behind the scenes and this is another proof so fidelity president files for a new bitcoin fund so putting their money where their mouth is Philly President and Director, uh, Digital Funds, Peter Juber, Huber, today filed paperwork with the uh, U.S. SEC, our Securities and Exchange Commission, informing the regulator of a new fund dedicated to Bitcoin, the previous unknown Wise Origin Bitcoin Index. I remember this from, from a while ago. They said there's this new Origin Bitcoin, there's a new Wise uh, Bitcoin Index Fund. They don't really know about it. 
It was supposed to have like, was it half a million, a couple million? I forgot, but now it looks like. Uh, this was incorporated this year and is being run from the same Boston headquarters where the investing giant manages 8.3 trillion in customer funds. That's a lot of money. The firm recently published the result of a survey of 800 institutional investors from the US and Europe, finding that 36 of respondents were already invested in digital assets, 60% said digital assets had a place in their portfolio, and this was uh, from Fidelity themselves, uh, what they actually did the survey. And they've got a lot of people to pull that survey into, so good information. And I think it's just, that's the thing, when you have access to all this data and analytics, you can kind of make a pretty good choice. It's like a story we covered a little bit ago, MicroStrategy. Uh, they do a lot with data analytics. And what they did was their CEO came out and they said, hey, we, we just bought 21,000 plus Bitcoin. Uh, this was just this month. And it valued at around 250 million. Uh, they now own 0.1% of all Bitcoin. And the CEO said, hey, Bitcoin's digital gold. Harder, stronger, faster, and smarter than any money that has preceded it. And he didn't beat around the bush. He wasn't like, well, it could be this or it could be that. He came out and said it. So remember, uh, all these high level uh, institutions and all these different corporations, they have a lot of data analytics and they're looking at things that you and I are not privy to. And I just think, why don't I just, you know, jump on the coattails, see where it leads me. And how to finish up, this is the latest development in Fidelity showing the seriousness with which it is taking Bitcoin as an asset. A year after becoming one of the earliest institutional supporters of Bitcoin in 2017, when Fidelity CEO Abigail Johnson publicly said, She'd been mining the asset. The company formalized its interest with the launch of Fidelity Digital Assets. And this is the story I totally forgot about. Fidelity, a trillion asset under management. They're like, oh yeah, we're mining Bitcoin. Can you imagine? Just imagine, just, just, just think back if we could just remind ourselves of these big, huge entities. And they're like, you know what? We're mining it because we think it's going to be awesome. It's not like they're out there mining some random nonsense stuff or investing in something random. They're like, this is going to be big. We're going to go big. And only makes sense. The following year in 2019, the New York Department of Financial Services granted Fidelity a so-called bit license, allowing it to run a variety of crypto businesses. So again, they were one of those that got a bit license. It's all about who you know. That's just me. All right, so that's it for that section. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, we're going to jump into Q and C of the day. Just so you know, I want to ask you a question. I broke down and finally got some uh, Apple uh, AirPods instead of the wired approach, but uh, I'm not for sure if the audio is that great. And that's the reason why I was using the wired ones, because the audio was always good. So I'm, tr I'm trying these, these new AirPods out. If the audio sucks, just say, hey, the audio is not that great. Go back to the wires. Let me know in the comments section. Then let's, uh, let's jump in. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Q and C of the day. I'll get to the C part in a second. Uh, welcome to the office. So uh, this this question, which is a pretty good one, it came to us from a subscriber by the name of Mr. JX. This came via uh, Twitter. So Mr. JX says, or asked the question, hey, I've been watching your YouTube channel for a few months. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. And he says, this might seem like a stupid question. Before we go on, let me just say one thing. Uh, there are no stupid questions. I know everybody hears that and they're like, no, there's stupid questions. That may be true, actually. But uh, in reality, if you have the question, I guarantee there's like a hundred other people behind you that have that exact same question. So just ask the question. And uh, if it's something I can answer real quick, uh, then I'll probably fire it back. But uh, for this one, I want to do a cue of the day. So the question he has is, uh, however, I feel uncertain about some projects. I understand that Bitcoin is seen as valuable because it can be seen as a store of value like gold or potentially become a decentralized payment system and is not vulnerable to our artificial inflation. That part is very true. It is, a, uh, uh, it is a hardening of a digital asset. But are all other cryptocurrencies, keyword here, currencies, aiming to replace our conventional forms of money? For example, products like Chainlink, VeChain, and Cardano, are they products you should invest in because they provide useful blockchain services? Yes, such as supply chain efficiency and Oracle Network, or because they will be used as a form of currency. In other words, should I buy Chainlink and bet because they, they, they will replace the US dollar or the pound of the euro or the yuan or something like that? So I'm gonna make this super simple. Uh, yes, that is exactly what they're gonna do. I'm just kidding. No, what, what it really comes down to is this. Let me back up. First of all, in this space, we have used cryptocurrencies to describe everything. And I think it's a mistake. It's why I named my channel Digital Asset News. So, and this comes all the way back from like 2010 you know, back in the day when the Bitcoin maximals were just getting started. 
And everything was about currency. It was about replacing the dollar. It was about making not a, not a store of value, but being able to pay somebody through all over the world instantaneously like that. As time has moved on, Bitcoin's not going to be a currency. It's just not. Now, I could be wrong, but from what I see right here, I think it's going to be digital gold. And I've talked about that numerous times. So when we see, keep saying cryptocurrencies, people who are new or people who are coming in or people who are going to be coming in, they will look at this and say, uh, this is all currency. I don't understand what's going on. So I think, my personal opinion, we should always be saying cryptocurrency and digital assets. We are in 2020, going to 2021. Uh, Bitcoin is going to be a store of value. That's what I firmly believe. XRP uh, may be a form of currency at some point. Depends on what the government does. I don't know. Right now, it seems to be working like a stable coin. And um, uh, besides that, Stellar uh, could be one of those as well. You could also look at Monero and maybe Litecoin. I, I, I really don't know as far as the currency side, but I see a potential upside for digital assets. So to answer your question, Mr. JX, Mr. Jax, Jax, um, we are not investing in these to replace currency. That is not what's going to happen. I mean, later on, uh, it, it could be in a basket, but that's a whole other video. So if you're going to invest in something like a Cardano, like an Ethereum, like a Tezos, um, these types of things are for smart contracts. And what's great about smart contracts is that they can do a lot of things like decentralized finance, like voting, like putting different things like your healthcare records on uh, on a blockchain, or like do, recording um, different types of things for mortgages and for different assets. So they're just right there. And, and we could even replace you know, lawyers to some degree as far as contracts go. So think about that and think about Bitcoin. Can Bitcoin do that? No, I don't think so. Bitcoin couldn't even handle all the people that were coming in in 2017. And there wasn't even that many. So if you think that it's going to happen like that, I mean, Bitcoin maximalists will say that Bitcoin's the end all be all. And that's their thing. I tend to disagree. I tend to think that there is a big room uh, for a lot of different things for this space to really advance. So that's the part of smart contracts. VeChain, I see it as uh, supply chain metrics or tracking. So if you have something like um, products coming out of China, not to get on down on China, but let's be honest, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, counterfeit type of things coming out of there. It'd be pretty important to know things like, is this a real Chanel bag? Is this a real Nike golf driver? Is this really baby formula from the correct factory? Uh, I need to know all these things because, I mean, I mean, the products are something, but like uh, food and baby formula and medicine, just to name a few, that'd be kind of important to make sure that we know exactly where it is. And if we can track it on the blockchain, that would be huge. And then on, to get back to the smart contracts, that's why I like Chainlink and the other one, bang, one that starts with a B, I forgot. Yeah. Tell me what it is in the comment section. I always forget. Uh, but that is another Oracle. And what's great about blockchains is that, you know, they can... They can do a lot of great things. One thing they cannot do is pull out outside data. So if we want to know things for decentralized finance, things like the price of some type of coin or interest rates or weather or whatever else or APRs, we can't get that on the blockchain. We have to pull that from outside. That's why Chainlink and Oracles are so important. So all these things that we're talking about, let me just make clear, they're not going to be currencies. They're not going to be currencies. They're valuable because they do certain things. Um, and I see them as you know doing very well moving forward. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, if uh, if you have any other things, just put in the comments section. I'll do my best to answer those. So that's the first part of the Q. So the Q and the C stands for now. What do you think? Uh, correction of the day. So the correction of the day yesterday, I had uh, done a correction. I had talked about the Daedalus wallet, and there was supposed to be a new version, version 2.2. And then when I looked on the website, it just said 2.1. I didn't realize because I didn't know that on the top right-hand corner is a little button called, well, there's a little tab that says flight. And flight is when you click on to get all the different updates for all the different things they are testing. And that's where they put 2.2. So eh, didn't know, now I know, fantastic. So that's one thing. And then yesterday we did a video talking about how I compared the PayPal mafia, all the different guys who had created PayPal and then moved on and created thing, little things like you know YouTube and uh, SpaceX and Tesla and you know, little, little stuff, LinkedIn. And then I compared that to um, the Ethereum Mafia or what I call the Ethereum Mafia, which are all the gentlemen that had created or co-founded or founded, however you want to say it, uh, Ethereum. And we took a look at that. And one of them was Amir Chetrit. 
And Amir Chetrit, I did a Google search and I tried to find him and there was a couple websites. And unfortunately, uh, those two websites that I found had the picture of Sundar Pichai, who is the Google CEO, or, or sorry, Alphabet and Google CEO. And uh, when I saw that, I go, oh, that, that's him. I did a couple more searches and there he was. So uh, just misinformation. So on the um, uh, thumbnail of the video, I changed it from uh, Sundar's image to just a generic uh, looking icon of a person because I cannot find this guy anywhere. And that's it. So a little mistake, but the rest of the information is all good. Uh, hopefully you like the video and whatnot. I think moving forward, uh, I will probably be doing uh, these Q and C's uh, every day because let's be honest, uh, everybody makes mistakes, right? No one is perfect. It is a weird time we live in though, don't you think that uh, everybody who is wrong is never wrong. Everybody's an expert. Everybody knows exactly what's going to happen. And when you call them on it, like, no, 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 I didn't say that. I said this, or I said this, this, and this. <sighs> I got to tell you, uh, sometimes it's refreshing when someone just stands up and goes, I screwed up. Uh, that was my mistake. I'm in there. I don't know. Tell me what you think about that. Uh, but that's it for the Q and C of the day. Let's jump back. All right, so thanks for sticking with me to the end. I just want to say thanks to all the people who have joined up for Digital Asset News. If you don't know, in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a Join Now button. It doesn't give me anything special. It's just a buck ninety-nine, and uh, it's like a tip. So I just want to. What I do is I just do random shout-outs for all the members. So uh, shout out Sean Thompson, Dawid Brzezinski. I know I said Brzezinski right. I'm pretty sure I did. And then we got Keith K, TTP 911, nice. Gold backed crypto, interesting. All right, soft. <laughs> Eating my shids. And then Mo, Mo Zanel. All right, so thanks everybody uh, who has signed up. Really appreciate it. Uh, also, if you like those types of videos or this type of video, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right. Uh, go ahead and check those out. I don't have any control of that. YouTube pretty much takes care of that. Just like the uh, ads you may have seen in the beginning, middle, or end, I have no control over that. If you saw a scam ad, uh, report it to uh, YouTube or just you know give them a shout and say, hey, this is a scam. They'd love to hear from you. So that's it for today. Thanks for sticking with me. See you on the next one.